Oh, hey, today we're going to talk about how to cut miters on your CNC. So if that's something you're into, consider sticking around. So if you don't happen to know what a miter is, a miter is where you have an angle on one piece of wood, an angle on another piece of wood. When they meet up, the joint that they form, called miter joint, doing a bad job of showing it, but you get the idea. So if you're going to do boxes or any type of wraparound grain thing where you're looking to get nice wraparound grain all the way around, miters are the way to go. If you're going to do miters, the first thing we got to talk about is bit geometry. So say you want to make a four-sided box. Four sides means 90 degrees on each corner, which means that you need to cut with a 90 V bit. So here's the 90 V bit I use. This is by Amana. Um, I'm not sure of the actual model number. I'll link it down in the description. Anyway, so if you're going to cut a miter with this bit, as it's traveling through the wood, it's going to cut a 45 on each side. I'll do a little diagram up here that kind of shows you what it looks like as it's going through. So as it cuts through, it's doing a 45 on each side, but how wide do you set your path area or what do you do? So there's a couple different avenues you can take if you want to use a CNC bit to cut miters on your CNC. You need to do a profile pass where you basically just draw a line and then set the depth of your bit to that level and then have it move through the material. That's great as long as your bit's big enough to handle it and your CNC can handle plowing through that much wood at one time. If all you're doing is like an eighth inch or a quarter inch, it should be okay. But if you're doing anything bigger than that, you're going to need to do more than one pass. So if you're going to go that route, what you need to do is a V-carve. So most people, when they talk about V-carving, they're, they're doing signs. So you have a bit and it travels inside and cuts all the fancy lettering. And anyway, it makes a nice fancy sign. Um, when you V-carve for miters, what you're doing is basically creating a box that your miter is going to fit in. And the easiest way to do that is to think about the math of how a 45-45-90 degree triangle works. So I'll try to describe it in the best way I can, and I'll put some pictures up here to show you basically how the math works. But anyway, if your bit's traveling through the wood, what I need you to imagine is that you're not really cutting, this is a 90, but don't think of that as a 90 of concern. Draw a line straight up the middle and then go to one side. Think of each part of this as its own little triangle. So by that logic, you're no longer really looking at, you don't care about this side at all. That side, that length is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. What you're concerned about is the principles of a 45, 45, 90, where the two A sides, again, I'll show it up here. The two A sides are equal and the B side is a different length from A. Basically, your full depth of cut is equal to half of the width of your V-carve box for your miter. So, say you want to cut through material that's uh, three quarters of an inch deep. You can do that. What you need to do is just set up a V-carve where you have a 90 V-bit, and then the width of your V-carve rectangle is 1.5 inches. Then that way, it's getting half on one side and half on the other, and it'll go through multiple passes but it'll ultimately go all the way to the bottom of that piece. All right, now say so you want to do a hexagon. You need a 60 V bit. The math for that is even easier. So this is a 60 V, which means the other corners of the triangle are also 60 degrees, which means that all sides should equal the same length. So if you want to go cut a miter in quarter inch material, guess how wide your V carve is going to be? Is it going to be double the width or the exact width? The correct answer is it'll be the exact width. So when this is traveling through, going at 0.25 deep, the width of your V-carve will also be 0.25. So let's talk about hangups with using your CNC for miters. Um, for one thing, if you have to do multiple passes, every time you do another pass, there's a chance for error. So say, for instance, your bit slips. Or say, for instance, your material is like 0.23, but you are cutting for 0.25. So now what's going to happen is your bit is going to go all the way through your material and plow out that spot right in between where your miter would have been. Another thing that can happen is called bit deflection. So as you're running your CNC through your material, your bit may go a little bit to one side or the other, depending on if you're doing a climb cut or a conventional cut or something like that. That can leave a little lip on the inside of your miter, which can be really annoying. It's not a big lip, but you still need to either sand it off or shave it off or do something like that. In the past, I used to use my table saw to clean up the uh, sides of miters, but these days I've managed to get my CNC mitering down to a point where I don't need to do any cleanup. Hooray!
Other things that can happen are just like bit degradation. So this is an Amana bit and it's got four carbide inserts. I make a lot of boxes and I use my CNC to make a lot of those boxes. So if you're running a 90V bit all day, every day, eventually that bit's gonna wear out and the quality of your miter is going to be impacted based on the dullness or sharpness of that bit. So something to keep in mind. Another good tip is that when you're cutting miters, you want that to be the first thing you cut with your CNC project. So say you're cutting a box. If you decide that you're going to do the cutout for the box before you do the miters, well, you're going to have a bad time because your piece is probably going to explode. Um, or best case scenario is you just get blowout as your V bit travels through the edge of your workpiece and blows out whatever clean edge that you had already created. So do your mitering first. And then after your mitering's done, do any conventional cutting. Future Alex here. One more thing I had not considered was the speed of your bit. So if you're moving through material at a pretty deep depth, you probably don't want to go more than like 20 to 40 inches per minute, unless you like having a lot of chatter or you have a really, really strong spindle and you're using really big bits. And that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, thanks for stopping by and watching and have a good day. Keep it classy. See you later.